Okay, so in this example, we're going to look at uh, adding some loops to our game to increase the functionality, and then also add some uh, logic structures, some if tests to it. So here's uh, about where we wound up last time. So uh, we've got an on start loop here. We've got our tile map. Uh, we've got the my player sprite being created. It's this bird image. It's of type player. We've got this statement in here to move it with the buttons. That means when we go over to the game console and you have to have your mouse over here in the console window. You can move it either with the arrow keys or you can use the mouse to move the uh, controller here. And then uh, we had our tile map set up so that the green area was a wall so that we're not able to move there. So we've got this statement, place my sprite on top of random path icon. And then we've got a, a food sprite, which is uh, this fruit. Uh, we have to say that it's of type food. And then also want to place it on the path so that we can have the character access it. And then it says camera follows a sprite my player sprite. Since we've got some food things here and we've got my player sprite up here, I'm going to just move this one statement up. Notice that you can drag and drop these uh, and then it just separates out and inserts the statement in. It's not going to affect the gameplay at all. It just uh, makes the program a little bit easier to see. And then we have this event down here that when sprite of kind player overlaps other sprite of kind food, we destroyed uh, my food with the spray effect. Um, so start with this game. If you haven't already uh, got it from the last set of videos, just pause this video and then go ahead and get your game set up. Now what we're going to do is um, change the flow of the game a little bit to make it a little more general and make it easier to modify. And we can do that by adding um, a loop. So when we go here to loops, you'll notice that these are all uh, this green color. Some of them have the flat around them indicating that they can't be inserted into something. But some of them have the puzzle piece appearance, meaning that they can be inserted into something. So we've got a forever loop. That means once it gets to the bottom, it just starts right over at the beginning. We've got a repeat, and you can change the number of times. Uh, so it'll just repeat the statements that you have inserted into there that number of times. We've got a while uh, loop, and the while loop allows us to do some logic, which we'll talk about in just a sec. Uh, and then we've got also a for loop uh, so that this index will take on these values of zero the first time and then the variable index will take on the value one the next time and all the way up to, uh, to four. Uh, once it hits uh, that, then it won't, won't uh, continue to go through the loop. And then we've got a, a loop here that will allow you to go through uh, all the values of a list. We'll talk about these lists or arrays in the next video. So for right now, let's grab a forever loop and let's put it in here. And let's try to do the same functionality that we had down here, but now inside of our forever loop. So we're going to go to uh, logic and we need a test. So we need to test to see if we have this overlap. So I'm going to grab this first generic uh, if then statement. Notice we've got this one and then we've got an if then else. And then you can continue clicking the plus on these um, to make them more and more complicated uh, and give different uh, tests. But this one will be fine for what we want to do. Now we'll go over here to sprites. And when we come down here, notice that we have this rectangle shape, but that it has those diamond ends. So let's click on that. Notice that that's exactly the same shape as this true. So what that means is we can go ahead and dock it in, that it's a logic statement that we can dock into that if loop. So let me move this down a little bit. And let me move this one up. 
So what we wanted to do was when we have this overlap, we want to destroy my food. So I'm going to grab this inside statement and dock it in down here. I'm going to get rid of this event because I'm replacing it now uh, with this uh, if statement that's in my forever loop. Let's see if I can get these both on the screen. So it's giving me a little exclamation point. So it means I've got an error. So the error is with the name. It's my sprite, but I changed it to be my player sprite. So I'm going to pull this down, click my player sprite, overlaps with, let me pull this down. Uh, my food is now my food, so I'm going to change that to be my underscore food and give it a sec. That should fix those. And then we had already corrected that in the, the statement that I pulled over, but that would need to be destroyed my food with the same name. So now let's go down here and sure enough, we're able to do exactly the same kind of functionality that we had previously. Now it's makes this, this makes it a little bit easier to add a few more things to our program. So let's create an enemy now that's going to track us and let's see how we can add that information to our forever loop as well. So we're going to go to Sprite and then we'll do a set Sprite. Let's just put it down here at the bottom. I'm going to move this one over here for the time being. Uh, and then let's click this blank area. Don't forget you've got gallery here. And let's pick a good enemy. Why don't we pick a ghost enemy? And we want this to be type enemy. That's one of the presets that we have here. And obviously if we play test it, there's our enemy and it's in the, the wall area. So that's not good. So let's grab one of these uh, place sprites on top of. Notice if I do a right click on this, it gives me this option to duplicate the statement and then I can just nest it down here. And then let me give this a name. So we've got my sprite. I'm going to call this uh, new variable and let's call this my underscore enemy so that we use that same naming convention. And then we'll do place my enemy on top of a random tile. So now, and that's a food tile. So now let's take a look and see what we've got. And there's the enemy. You notice every time I add a couple of statements, I'm just going through and play testing it. And that's a good idea because if I mess something up, now I know that it must have been the last statement or two that I added. If I add a lot of stuff, I don't really know what I did to mess it up then. So now let's give the enemy a little more functionality. So we'll go to Sprite and we'll use the set uh, sprite to follow Sprite. We're getting that exclamation point. Oops, I thought I deleted that. Looks like I didn't. Uh, so we'll change this to be my enemy. We've got an exclamation point here. Again, that's just telling us that it doesn't recognize that name. So we're going to change that to be uh, my player sprite. We've got this plus just like we had before. Um, so we've got a speed multiplier here. Let's reduce the speed on this a little bit just to kind of give us a fighting chance. Okay, and then let's play test it. So we can see that the enemy is now hunting us. Okay, so that's great. Now we want to check for that overlap. So let's pull this forever loop down so we can see it a little bit better. Let's grab another if statement or you could just duplicate the one that's already in there. Make sure that your next if it needs to go all the way under. If you stuck it in here that would mean that the player sprite would have to overlap with the food sprite. Let me just dock it in there for just a sec. For this to even be tested and we want these to be separate. So it's got to be completely outside of that first if, but still in that forever loop. And let's go and grab, look for that 
uh, rectangle with the diamond ends again. Let's grab that one. Notice it's got the little red dot there and it's highlighted in yellow. So I'm going to drop it in there. And then we just need to change these names. So this would be my underscore enemy was what I changed it to. And this would be my player sprite. Now we need to uh, do something here. So let's go to find that destroy. So there we go, destroy my sprite with, let's say, uh, fire. And we've got that exclamation point. So again, I need to change that name so that it recognizes it. Let's check and see if that's actually working. Nope, it did, but it spawned it right on top of me. I'm going to restart it. So it's looking good. It's coming in there. And then when it's hitting me, it's doing that fire effect. So that's great. Let's also make it a little bit more interesting by adding in some uh, game information. So we're going to go to info here. We'll do a set score to zero. We'll dock that into the start loop. So now it should start tracking my score. So there's my zero. Um, but I'd like for my score to increase the longer that I'm able to stay alive and dodge that enemy. So let me go back to info and we'll do a change score by one. And then now let's dock that anywhere inside that forever loop and see if that's now changing the score. And sure enough, it is. But I'm continuing to get a score even after I've already lost the game. So I need to uh, put a game over. So if I go to game here under gameplay, there's a game over you lose. I'm going to click that. And then we need to be really careful where we put this game over. It's only game over when the enemy makes contact with us. So we need to insert that into the same values here that are executed when this statement is true. So here's the enemy. And then there's the, the game over. Now it's keeping track of my score. And if I reset it, if I can do... Stay alive for a little bit longer. Now it'll also update my high score. I can also, um, maybe if I attach, if I'm able to get the food, maybe that should also increase my score. So let's grab a change score by one and let's dock it in here so that this is only affected if I'm able to get the food. And then let's add this to say a thousand. So if I'm able to get the food, let's see if I can dodge the enemy, then that should then increase my score by a thousand. So now you can see that that's jumped up. Let me find the enemy so that it's over. So I've got the basics now of kind of a rudimentary game. You can see we've got two uh, if statements in here, and then we've got our two loops. We've got our on start loop, and then we've got our forever loop. Um, so I'll show you how to kind of keep going and do some more advanced concepts. Uh, but once you get your, your game to this stage where you've got um, two loops, and then you've also got two logic statements, um, you, then you've met the, the minimum criteria. But it's good to continue kind of looking at this because um, we'll be able to see some concepts in um, Blockly that we'll see again when we're programming in C++. And it may be a little bit un easier to understand them in Blockly as opposed to C++. So thanks for watching.